Hello friends. Uh, so to build enterprise data warehouse in Hadoop, I have started a new uh, uh, series of videos. It will be a complete course. And uh, as per uh, as part of this video, I will uh, I will be ex uh, doing some recap on some important concepts. The first one is setting up the environment. To set up the environment, you need to have VMware software. You need to have Cloudera Quick Start VM. Uh, you need to have Eclipse. So there, there will be some Java development, uh, very minimal, uh, and hence you have to uh, uh, you have to uh, set up your Eclipse environment. So whether you are from Java background or not, uh, to follow this uh, uh, series and to practice, you have to set up uh, environment with all these tools. Uh, and if you are uh, if you are using Windows system. And then you might have to install putty or some uh, 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 some uh, some flavor of putty so that you can connect to uh, uh, you can connect to your vm or you can, some you can actually copy the data uh, from your pc to uh, vm without much issues as well so all those things are covered uh, in my playlist uh, earlier playlists which i have created as part of my channel you can if you can go to my channel by typing youtube.com uh, slash c slash technology mentor and uh, you can go to playlists uh, so when you go to my channel uh, it will look like this so you can click on playlists and uh, uh, you can uh, you can watch this one so you need not watch all the videos for now, uh, but you you should know how to set up the cloud the quick start VM. So at least the second one and the and also you should know how to set up the Eclipse for MapReduce development as well as uh, Maven. So these three videos you should watch uh, uh, so that you can actually follow uh, the instructions as part of this uh, playlist. Okay. So, uh, assuming you have the environment, uh, I'm going to the next slide. So you need to understand a little bit of Hadoop architecture. Uh, if you go through that video, it will give you some insights on the architecture also. Uh, but even if you do not understand uh, uh, a lot, that is fine. Uh, because as a Java developer, uh, that is not the primary criteria, at least to work. Uh, uh, on these projects probably for interview you might have to have the knowledge but to work uh, on uh, data warehousing type of solutions uh, using Hadoop ecosystem you need not have to uh, have very in-depth knowledge okay uh, but at higher level you should know uh, what Hadoop is all about uh, as I mentioned to you in uh, Hadoop introduction uh, video Sorry, uh, yeah, how to introduction video. If you remember this, uh, HDFS is nothing but a distributed file system uh, where the files will be dumped. And we have MapReduce based solutions and non MapReduce based solutions to process the data on HDFS. So if you are using MapReduce based solutions like HiUPig, HiuScoop, Uzi, etc., uh, you will hear uh, uh, these terms called uh, YARN. So this uh, uh, this series will cover YARN in detail uh, because I have downloaded the latest version of uh, Cloudera Quick Start VM. Uh, so uh, when you uh, actually download, make sure you your version is 5.3.0. Okay, so you can follow the instructions with, uh, in the playlist, but when you choose the version, make sure you download 5.3.0. Okay, and uh, the uh, once you download and uh, once you open the uh, Cloudera Quick Start virtual machine in VMware software, it will look like this. Okay, and uh, uh, it will come with all the necessary tools uh, that will be taught in this series so you need not worry struggling in the, uh, uh, struggling to set up the environment everything is inbuilt in this um, so it it has uh, uh, hdfs it has map reduce and as we are using the latest version uh, you will uh, listen uh, 
uh, term called yarn uh, which will be covered a uh, little bit later uh, which is not very important for uh, data warehouse developers at least to work uh, on these projects okay and then uh, you need to recap on traditional rdbms traditional rdbms uh, especially like oracle is designed based on the code rules and they are built for transactional as well as operational systems and uh, they have constraints indexes etc uh, hence it make it uh, uh, not linearly scalable and if you think about it and for enterprise data warehouses transactions are not important and most of the use cases are batch and uh, as the traditional rdbmss like oracle informix sybase all these things are built for uh, transactional based systems uh, uh, when 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 you try to implement those for data warehousing type of uh, projects uh, you will hit uh, serious performance issues that's where the uh, data warehouse appliances like teradata or the mpp platforms like greenplum vertica all these things came into picture uh, however data is structured uh, uh, in uh, rdbmss as well as uh, 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 Teradata type of data warehouse appliances and also MPP platforms. So the first four uh, things that are uh, built for RDBMS are covered uh, partially in data warehouse uh, appliances like Teradata and also MPP platforms like Greenplum Vertica. But uh, in these environments, data is structured, and typically we we try to avoid redundancy uh, in traditional RDBMS. So you just keep those points in mind. They, they, these are very important to recap uh, because uh, uh, it will, uh, uh, when we start uh, using Hadoop, we have to break a lot of conventions. So that's why I'm highlighting all these things which, you, uh, which are typical in uh, uh, not only just RDBMS databases like Oracle, but also uh, in Teradata appliances like uh, so data warehouse appliances like Teradata as well as MPP appliances like Greenplum or Vertica. So Hadoop advantages, uh, it is distributed storage and computing. Even the MPP platforms uh, and uh, partially Teradata, Teradata partially is distributed storage and computing but uh, need not be at the level of Hadoop. It is linearly scalable. Uh, MPP platforms also designed for linear scalability. Uh, uh, when I say MPP platforms, I'm talking about Greenplum, Vertica, uh, Aster, and those things. These can store both uh, structured as well as unstructured data. Uh, this is the main difference. Uh, means whether it is a RDBMS or a uh, data warehouse appliance or a MPP appliance, uh, they can only store structured data. They cannot store unstructured data. Whereas in Hadoop, you can actually store unstructured data as well. Uh, Hadoop is economical and that reliable. So this is where Hadoop has a lot of advantages, uh, not only against RDBMS. Uh, with respect to RDBMS, Hadoop have all the four advantages. Uh, with respect to uh, Teradata or MPP platforms like Greenplum and Vertica, the last two are the advantages. It can store both structured and unstructured data. Uh, when I say it, it is Hadoop. And also Hadoop is much more economical and that reliable uh, because uh, 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 because we will be using open source software on commodity hardware okay so that that's what it, it will make it more economical uh, and uh, yet reliable because the, uh, the the way the technology is designed makes it uh, very reliable uh, especially for uh, projects uh, uh, related to data warehousing and analytics these are the challenges or limitations uh, which are uh, 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 which, which you typically see in uh, not only RDBMSs but also uh, data warehouse appliances and MPP platforms. Uh, there are no transactions in Hadoop, so if you want, if you uh, uh, if any project, not only just data warehouse type of application, and uh, that requires transactions, uh, then uh, Hadoop might not be a very good solution. Uh, there will be no constraints. Uh, on write, uh, there will be some constraints on read, but uh, uh, not uh, at typical database level. So when I say no or minimal constraints, uh, if you think about Oracle, uh, 
or even teradata you uh, not null constraint is the most basic constraint and then you have check constraint you have uh, primary key constraints you have unique key constraints you have referential integrity constraints so uh, when you actually try to load data in batches into oracle or uh, uh, especially into oracle um, if you if you have worked on projects where your oracle is a target database to do the batch load one of the practice you might follow is to disable all the constraints load the data and uh, enable the constraint with no validate that is because because of all these constraints uh, for each and every insert on that that needs to be inserted into oracle database has to be checked against these constraints okay that's what makes it uh, not scalable and uh, when it comes to data warehouse type of applications we'll get data from already uh, um, uh, data from sources where the constraints are well defined because OLTP requires these constraints so it is redundant to have these constraints on the target okay um, but uh, uh, people tend to create them when uh, even uh, even though uh, those constraint checks are done on the source system as part of your ETL process but still some people tend to create these uh, referential integrity or uh, data integrity constraints on the target database uh, I feel it is absolutely not necessary for most of the applications uh, related to data warehouse but people do that so when it comes to Hadoop you can't create any constraints so you have to take care uh, about data integrity as part of your uh, uh, ETL process or in the source system you cannot actually enforce constraints while writing data into Hadoop Hadoop is not for small files uh, and uh, it is not for mission critical systems uh, there will be no updates or uh, even deletes you cannot delete individual records in uh, uh, Hadoop HDFS you have to delete the files or you have to insert the files so you cannot uh, update uh, individual records in the file and also you cannot delete uh, the records uh, from the files and it is not for random access so Hadoop is not developed for random access so that's where uh, if you try to do some interactive querying uh, interactive querying typically requires random access as HDFS uh, typically does not work that way uh, you cannot uh, uh, you, you cannot uh, do the interactive reporting uh, uh, from Hadoop directly so now I am talking about map reduce challenges in the previous slide I had I spoke about HDFS which is file system challenges now I am talking about map reduce challenges map reduce challenges is it's uh, there is no real time it's only batch there is very minimum index support uh, especially the indexes cannot be active uh, which means that if you uh, if you build an index and if the table underlying table is updated or underlying file is updated you have to rebuild the index okay so there cannot be streaming indexes in uh, uh, Hadoop ecosystem and there will be no updates you cannot update even using MapReduce so MapReduce is a processing engine as most of you might not aware of what MapReduce is MapReduce is a processing engine which will be sitting on top of the file system called Hadoop distributed file system alias HDFS so that is the recap and now I will talk about agenda so uh, now let me go back to the uh, picture again about how to build the uh, data warehouse I'm going back to introduction uh, picture so if you remember this is the video uh, which we have seen okay so uh, we have to um, uh, if you think about it ODS and DW are nothing but databases so we have to create the database and we have to do the ETL as well and also we have to get data from source systems into Hadoop and uh, also from Hadoop to reporting database and then uh, yeah, re reporting will be done from the reporting database okay so now here uh, so to create the databases we will use Hive okay so Hive is the uh, actual technology which will be used to uh, to simulate the databases uh, like ODS, uh, EW, etc., and then uh, we will be using Hive 
to to data model the tables so how you uh, have the syntaxes like create table commands which you typically see in traditional uh, rdbmss or uh, data warehouse uh, technologies so hive is the tool which we'll be using and you will be learn that as part of this series and then uh, we will be extracting and loading data into hadoop uh, we mostly use scoop or hive to get the uh, data but in some cases these two might not be feasible solutions that's where java map reduce comes into picture okay and then uh, transformation we will be doing uh, using hive we can do it to using pig also pig is out of the scope of the course i will not be calling pig uh, as part of this uh, pig and hive are alternatives uh, when it comes to implementing enterprise data warehousing using hadoop ecosystem as most of the enterprises are familiar with sql type uh, syntax uh, i will be ta talking more about hive than pig and then you have to use java map reduce wherever hive cannot uh, accomplish uh, your requirements and then you will see uh, how to define workflows using woozy okay so this will be the agenda hive architecture hive ddl and then we will talk about scoop and we will go back to java map reduce uh, which is mostly out of the scope of the course but i will uh, uh, i will introduce you couple of map reduce programs uh, where you have to write uh, uh, in the scope of uh, uh, building enterprise data house using hadoop ecosystem mm -hmm. java map reduce should be used as a last resort uh, because it is uh, 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 tedious to code uh, and also it can be buggy okay so you should avoid as much as possible but if it is inevitable then you have to use java map reduce and then we will have uh, hive data load language which is similar to dml like insert update delete and we will be talking about hive ql uh, as i mentioned pig i might uh, not cover in detail for this session and then i will talk about Udi. okay so you will understand how to uh, build this using uh, uh, hadoop ecosystem okay so that's it uh, for this video i will uh, 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 i will continue in the next video uh, uh, in the next video we will we will talk about uh, uh, this picture more in detail okay